we need to abolish ICE. If you're older than 16, you're older than ICE. And if you want your opinion on politics to be taken seriously, don't wear a t-shirt with a graphic on it. I mean, come on. Now This News posted a video opinion piece by the co-founder of a progressive think tank called Data for Progress, who attempts to make the case to abolish ICE, the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency. ICE, or Immigration and Customs Enforcement, was created in 2003 as part of post-9-11 legislation that housed immigration enforcement under the Department of Homeland Security. In 1996, when the country was worried about crime and drugs, Yeah, we aren't worried about drugs or crime, you know, now or anything. Democrats conceded to legislation called IRA-IRA that made it easy to deport people for minor violations. Hear that, everyone? They conceded. The truth is that lots and lots of Democrats used to be adamantly against illegal immigration, including President Clinton. All Americans, not only in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country are rightly disturbed by the large numbers of illegal aliens entering our country. Ooh, do go on. The jobs they hold might otherwise be held by citizens or legal immigrants. The public service they use impose burdens on our taxpayers. That's why our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more, by hiring a record number of new border guards, by deporting twice as many criminal aliens as ever before, by cracking down on illegal hiring. Hmm, that sounds familiar. My administration has answered the pleas of the American people for immigration enforcement and border security. We must restore integrity and the rule of law at our borders. Anyway, in 2006, H.R. 6061, the Secure Fence Act, was passed by Congress. The act called for systematic border surveillance and physical infrastructure enhancements to prevent unlawful border entry. The Senate voted to pass the act 80 to 19, including Senate Democrats like Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, Dianne Feinstein, Chuck Schumer, and future President Barack Obama who coincidentally wrote in his 2006 book, The Audacity of Hope, When I see Mexican flags waved at pro-immigration demonstrations, I sometimes feel a flush of patriotic resentment. When I'm forced to use a translator to communicate with the guy I fixed in my car, I feel a certain frustration. And in his 2013 State of the Union address, President Obama was pretty tough on illegal immigration. Real reform means stronger border security, and we can build on the progress my administration's already made, putting more boots on the southern border than at any time in our history, and reducing illegal crossings to their lowest levels in 40 years. Real reform means establishing a responsible pathway to earned citizenship, a path that includes passing a background check, paying taxes and a meaningful penalty, learning English, and going to the back of the line behind the folks trying to come here legally. Again, this, this all sounds so familiar. We have proposed new legislation that will fix our immigration laws and support our ICE and Border Patrol agents. It's time to begin moving toward a merit-based immigration system, one that admits people who are skilled, who want to work, who will contribute to our society, and who will love and respect our country. So when Trump calls for immigration reform, it's labeled as divisive, racist, and inflammatory rhetoric. But when Clinton and Obama do it, eh, not so much. Now when I do these videos on immigration, some people in the comments get upset that I occasionally use the term undocumented instead of illegal. And no one is more upset with me than Senator Chuck Schumer in 2008. When we use phrases like undocumented workers, we convey a message to the American people that their government is not serious about combating illegal immigration, which the American people overwhelmingly oppose. If you don't think it's illegal, you're not gonna say it. I think it is illegal and wrong. So thanks to Chuck Schumer and other Democrats, you have the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act, ICE, and the Secure Fence Act of 2006. All of these pieces of legislation created the infrastructure of mass deportation that Trump has set into motion. Except that mass deportations under Trump aren't happening. In fact, from 2009 to 2016, deportations of illegal immigrants were higher. So much so that pro-immigrant groups took to calling Obama the deporter-in-chief. During Obama's eight years in office, there were nearly 2.75 million deportations. But what about Trump? 
Well, in fiscal year 2017, ICE removed 226,000 people from the country, which is not only down 6% from Obama's last year in office, but is lower than every year Obama was in office. Which is not to say that the Trump administration isn't trying. ICE arrests under Trump's first year in office are 30% higher compared to Obama's last year in office. But it's less than half the arrests during Obama's first year. In 2009, ICE made 297,000 arrests. So Trump isn't anywhere close to those numbers. In fact, it's less than half. So until we get to that point, Trump is an underachiever. It should also be noted that in 2017, 74% of illegal immigrants arrested by ICE had a prior criminal conviction, compared to Obama's first year, where a whopping 61% arrested did not have prior criminal convictions. So when Obama deports thousands of illegal immigrants, they give him a cute nickname, the Deporter-in-Chief. When Trump does it, he's worse than Hitler. Gotta love that double standard. ICE is detaining journalists like Manuel Duran. It must be because of Trump's hatred for the news media, right? Nope. Manuel Duran is a journalist from El Salvador who is also an illegal immigrant. He was arrested for blocking a street during a protest in Memphis, Tennessee, and was subsequently transferred to ICE because in 2007, he was ordered removed from the US after failing to appear for a scheduled court date. And undermining elected politicians like Libby Schaaf. I would recommend that you look into obstruction of justice for the mayor of Oakland, California, Jeff. Undermining Libby Schaaf. In reality, Oakland Mayor Libby Schaaf was undermining ICE. In February 2018, she put out a warning on Twitter that an ICE operation was about to take place, which gave hundreds of illegal immigrants the chance to evade arrest. Many of them criminals with sex and robbery convictions. The fact that she has not been charged with obstruction of justice shows how ineffective and powerless the Trump administration is when it comes to enforcing many immigration laws. Representative Mark Pocan is introducing legislation to abolish ICE. Pocan is a leader of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, big surprise, who co-authored and introduced a bill that, if passed, would abolish ICE. And when Republicans called their bluff and offered to put the bill up for an immediate vote, Democrats vowed to vote against it, including Representative Pocan. So this genius won't even vote on a bill that he wrote, and instead accuses the Republicans of trying to pull a political stunt. In summary, the US Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency is here to stay. Because Abolish ICE isn't a real movement, it's a meme. Thanks for watching and hitting that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and maybe check out some of my other videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.